If you hate ads, I hate ads. You know what I like? Patreon.com slash Ink Dependence keeps this blog ad-free. <laughs> Hello folks, welcome to Ink Dependence. I'm Mike, and this is going to be a review of the Lachlan Electa. This is a pen that was loaned to me for review by Kenro Industries, who are the distributors for Lachlan in the U.S., and we will be taking a look at the raw brass version of this fountain pen which is an interesting pen that I've had my eye on for a little while. And I saw it at the DC Pen Show, I believe it was, and said, ah, I need to try that one out. So this is the box it comes in. It has a nice metal insert. has a uh, Lachlan Italy. It's kind of a stickery situation, but looks nice. Good box. Open it up, and there's all kinds of stuff in here. Uh, firstly, we have this little, little book here. It says Lachlan Italy Writing Instruments, and uh, it says these are all designed and individually handcrafted in Italy. I kind of think Lachlan is like one guy uh, who's making all these pens, which is pretty cool. They also have uh, a lifetime warranty on uh, all mechanical internal components or defects in finishing and all that. Although this pen is pretty hardcore. I don't really know what it would take to damage it. It's pretty tough. Uh, then you have this nice little brochure here that shows you how to fill it and such instructions on how to use the Lachlan Electa. And these are actually kind of useful with this pen because there is uh, there is something unusual in the way that it is constructed and uh, might be very, uh, very handy to have some instructions. All right, let's put this aside because I know how to use it. And then you have a clip and then you have the pen sitting in its little bed there, held underneath a ribbon. Nice Lachlan uh, Italy medallion in the box. Good presentation. Okay, so here is the pen. And this pen has always struck me as a little bit on the uh, like cyberpunk sort of, st or steampunk, I guess I should say, sort of side. You have Lachlan Italy engraved here in the barrel, and that is it as far as... Uh, branding and such. And really, you don't need much branding on this pen because this is a very unusual design. You have an all brass barrel and cap, uh, all, all brass components in this thing. It comes in raw brass like this one, which has tarnished a bit over the last uh, couple of months I've been using it. It also comes in a black finish and a chrome finish, which uh, look pretty neat, I think. Especially the chrome one has like a real nice aesthetic to it, but uh, the brass is very cool as well. A couple little threads up here for you to thread the cap on when you post it. There's a screw back here, and I'm not actually sure what happens if you unscrew that. I haven't taken that out. Uh, maybe it just holds... It just holds the finial on. It just like, looks like it's one piece. I'm not really sure what that's for. Uh, you can see through the barrel here, uh, these are actually windows into, uh, into the ink chamber area. There we go. You can see that. It's a little tough because they're not lined up, so you can only see them obliquely. But it will show you how much uh, ink is in your pen. And you have this nice knurling bit up here, and we'll talk about this here in a sec. Let's take off the cap. You can see this cap doesn't have any kind of roll stop or anything. The clip actually does go on the cap. I'll go ahead and put it on for now. I've had it on a little bit, uh, and there is something that we need to be aware of with this clip. Where is the... here we go. That is, it just kind of goes on the cap here. And it's a perfectly functional clip, I think. Uh, it just doesn't stay in any particular place, which is uh, a little unfortunate. And so I really didn't end up using the cap much. Uh, the other thing is that this cap will scratch, or sorry, this clip will scratch the cap a bit. I don't think it matters so much on this raw brass one, but it is a little weird that the included clip will scratch up the finish of your pen. And so I wouldn't use the clip at all on the black one. Uh, maybe not even the silver one if I were you. Uh, because, uh, you know, that's just, uh, it's not great. It's not a great feature, I don't think. But also, this pen is cool enough. You don't really need a clip with it. I mean, it's going to roll if you put it on your desk because it is round. But, like, what's going to happen if it hits the ground? It's going to go clang and hurt the floor, likely. This thing is... Is not super heavy, but it's heavy enough. Uh, capped, it weighs 50 grams, which is like 1.8 ounces. Uncapped, it's 38 grams, which is 1.3 ounces, which is a perfectly cromulent weight, I believe. Cap doesn't take too many uh, unscrews to unscrew, and you, cl and you put it on the back with, I don't know, like a half turn or something like that. It's actually very secure. I actually do like writing with this pen uh, posted uh, more than I like writing with it unposted. It's a little bit on the short side, perhaps, and I'm never really sure where to put my fingers uh, on this pen, which is, you know, not great. And so if I put the cap on the post here, then I can sort of hold it right here on the body and get to the page just fine. These are number five nibs, uh, and the nib is something I have a little bit of a question about. And um, uh, this one came with a Schmidt nib. You can see all the 
all the scroll work and all that jazz on there. It's uh, definitely a Schmidt. But uh, I've seen online these listed as being Schmidt nibs. You can find them in Yovo, maybe something else. And it just depends on, on what store you're looking at. I, that makes me think that like this is a very small uh, company. And so he's just kind of using the nibs that are available uh, to him at a particular time, is my guess. But um, the Yovo ones actually have, does this have anywhere on it? Actually has this little goose uh, engraved on it, which I think is pretty cool. I like this goose logo. I think it's cool. Uh, and some of them you'll find with the goose logo engraved on the clip, sometimes on the nib, on the Yovo ones, etc. So uh, lots of little different styling details on this pen. Uh, down here you find some threads, and these are a little bit on the sharp side, like they're a little bit rough, these threads, and I do kind of wish they were a bit wider so that they would be a little bit more comfortable because I do tend to put my fingers on those threads. Then you have the little tiny section down here, which is pretty small. Now let's um, show you what's kind of really interesting about this pen. You can fill it without opening it up at all just by working this knurled bit right here. This, this turns. I don't want to turn it too much because it actually does turn the piston inside of here, but this isn't exactly a piston filled pen. So here's how you open this thing. You get yourself a grip on the pen and you grip this, uh, this section down here and you just kind of pull. And I find it helps to give a little bit of a twist because this isn't actually screwed in, it is held in place with these three rubber O-rings, which is really interesting. I haven't seen other pens do that, but it means you can line this uh, this nib up with the words if you want, or with a, one of these holes if you want, whatever you, you like to do. And then this is a converter. It's gonna take it off. There's actually a screw-in converter, so you don't have to worry about it falling off. But uh, you can see down in there, metal threads and such. And then let's put this back on just for safety's sake. Uh, this bit right here is like a little knurled sleeve that is made to fit the back of the converter. So you sort of push that down on there and you can, you know, turn this to turn the, the piston from the outside. This is a really interesting sort of invention. I haven't seen that on a pen either. This has got all kinds of interesting stuff going on in this pen. And that's what made me want to review it in the first place because who doesn't want to review a pen that has all these cool features? The other thing is that it's, um, uh, the advertising copy says that this system right here works to dampen vibrations from the nib on the page. And I have to be 100% honest, I haven't really found that to be the case. I'm not sure how rough the paper is that you'd have to be writing on for that to matter. But also like it doesn't, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't like rattle inside the pen or anything like that, even though like this is in here, this is metal and it could rattle, but the tolerances are fairly tight. There's a little bit of a wiggle. Let's see if y'all can see. Just a little bit of a wiggle there, but not enough for it to like rattle around in the barrel because you don't really want that. Uh, but you're not really gonna, I haven't, I haven't written on paper that's rough enough for me to tell a difference. Um, so I don't know. I think this O-ring system is pretty cool and it's an interesting bit of manufacturing and an interesting idea. But if you're looking for something to dampen the vibrations, just get smoother paper, maybe. I, I don't know. <laughs> maybe maybe that's the thing to do. Uh, so there you have it. That's the, the Locked and Electa's features and such. So let's look at it next to a bunch of other pens. We'll do a little writing sample, and uh, we'll go over a couple like little pros and cons and that sort of thing for this. Uh, this little Lachlan, Lachlan Electa. Okay. Okay, it can be difficult to get a sense of scale with pens sometimes, and so that's why I like having these size comparisons. Uh, so I started out here with a Retro 51 because it is pretty much exactly the same length as a Retro 51 uh, rollerball. So there's the Lachlan, Lachlan Electa. Here's a Retro 51. We have here a Twisby Eco, which is much longer. Then we have the Shown Design Peak Pen, which is the same size as the Ultim uh, black and natural colors, but I went with the peak one here. And this is a Sailor Pro Gear. This is the full-sized Pro Gear. And so you can see it's kind of in that smallish but not pocket range, I think. Uh, I usually carry this around in a like a pen sleeve because I don't want it to damage other stuff in my pocket on account of it as a big like metal pen. So there we go. Let's take off some caps and see how that compares. Okay, here you go. So you can see that um, because this has a small nib, it's got that number five size nib, which is pretty close to what Twisby's using right here. Uh, it does get substantially, like it looks, it looks tiny. This nib looks small to me next to the number six Yovo in the peak design and next to the uh, 21K um, uh, Sailor nib there. 
So, uh, yeah, fairly small pen at the end of the day, although it's a more or less the same writing uh, writing size as these three. It's still quite a bit shorter than the Twisby, to no one's surprise. Now, let's go ahead and put caps on the back. I'll go ahead and post these because I'm going to write with the, with the Electa uh, posted most of the time. At least that's what I have done because uh, it feels comfortable. Once you have posted these things, it is uh, quite a bit shorter than some of these others, which makes me think like, yeah, this is kind of meant to be posted. And it's a very comfortable posted writing pen uh, because the cap is small. It is heavy because it's straight up brass, but it is uh, it is nonetheless quite comfortable to write with posted. Okay, let's take these down and do a little writing sample. So here we have the lock alignment. And I have in here a uh, fine steel Schmidt nib. I have found this nib to be really nice to write with. I don't have any complaints with it at all. It's, I mean, it is fine, so it's got that going for it. Uh, but it has had no problem in keeping up with my my daily writing and that sort of thing. I've used this, um, you know, a fair amount. The ink that I have in here is, uh, let, me put, let me grab this here because uh, spelling spelling is hard. This is Pannonia Merixuid. Which is uh, poison green. It's a really nice, uh, really nice kind of, kind of tealy color uh, that I've really been enjoying in this pen, and it's worked out really nicely. I've had no flow problems or anything like that. I have heard some people say that uh, Pannonia inks are a little bit on the dry side, but I haven't really experienced that with any of them, and this one seems to write. Uh, perfectly well in this nice fine Schmidt nib. Now you will see it was a little bit skippy right here, but that's because I've had this nib uh, uncapped for quite a while and uh, that's that's not a surprise and it's really not the pen's fault. Okay, let's talk a little bit about pros and cons then I'll uh, throw up a graphic with uh, with sizes and that sort of thing. Okay, so pros for this pen. I think it's got an interesting look to it. Um, Audrey doesn't care for the way this looks. It's going to be a very particular like taste that's going to enjoy this sort of steampunk aesthetic with knurling and little windows and odd shapes and like weird O-ring systems and things like that. But I think it is a pretty cool looking pen. I like the idea here with the uh, with using these. Although because there are these brass stays in here, which you kind of need to keep the the butt of the pen on uh it's it's you have to do it like real 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 fine fine movements to to use that piston from the outside and opening it is not really a problem i uh i like like i said i like this o-ring system i think this is interesting i, I like this I'm not going to come out accidentally like this is pretty it's pretty tight fit i like this knurling up here on this little this little i don't know i guess it's kind of like a nut which is really interesting. I think that's a cool system. Okay, now for uh, for cons. I think that most of the parts on here are kind of too sharp. Like there needs to be a little bit more refinement perhaps because when you put your fingers here, they're right on the threads and those threads are a little bit on the sharp side, even for me. Like you can see a little bit, you can see a little bit of lines and stuff right there just from you know holding it and writing with it for a fairly brief amount of time. When I write with it posted, I can move my fingers up a bit onto the barrel where I think they're supposed to be because then you can take advantage of like the, the dampening thing that's supposed to happen here because if you have your fingers on this, obviously the dampening is not going to work at all. You want your fingers right here, but for my hand, that's that's too small, and so I need to post it. So once you've posted it, this really isn't a problem. You've got the cap right here in the web of your hand, and it writes pretty well. But that's a, I mean, it's kind of a pro, I guess. I like writing with it posted better than I like writing with it unposted. Uh, but I think also these windows, as you can see here, if there was a little bit of like a chamfer or something in there to, uh, to knock down the edges on the side, I think that would be more comfortable. Your fingers aren't usually on it, but sometimes they are. And I think those could be a little bit more comfortable if they weren't quite as squared off uh, and exact as they were, just a little bit of a chamfer or something. I don't really know what that would take. I'm not an engine, uh, not a machinist, but it does seem like that would have helped. Uh, I like the branding on here. I think that looks nice. Uh, I also think that the uh, the cost on this is a little bit high at. Uh, <laughs> Somewhere between 199 and 250 bucks, it varies wildly depending on where you find it online. Um, the prices, just like uh, the nibs, uh, seem to be a little bit all over the place. Um, so you might get a Schmidt, you might get a Yovo, there might be something else. Uh, because I saw a nib that I just didn't recognize, I don't know what it was. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of interesting stuff going on with this pen, but it seems like it's made in small batches and maybe they all vary a little bit. So, uh, you know, it's got that going on. Uh, and lastly, I like the raw brass finish. I think brass is a cool, uh, cool material to be carrying around. 
It doesn't, I mean, it smells a little bit metallic, but it doesn't smell as much like pennies as a copper does. And it does pick up a little bit of a patina that is um, going to be particular to your hand. All right, lastly is a con thing, and that's that this clip, uh, this clip is not great. It's not a good idea, I don't think, to, to put it on your pen because it will give you these little scratches around your cap. And I want to say that's actually from the inside uh, of this clip. Like, there's got to be like a little bit of a, a divot or something. I don't know, but it does kind of scratch it up. Um, and you'll see there are a couple of sites I found while I was researching this that say, hey, watch out for scratches from the clip. But I didn't know that. Uh, and so I put that on there. Hopefully, Kenro doesn't mind too much that I scratched up that cap because I was just using this, man. I was just using the thing that was with it. So uh, it's it's a cool pen. It's got a it's got a lifetime warranty, which is, you know, as long as Lachlan's around, they, they'll, war um, they'll warranty it. And, uh, you know, it's a cool pen. I'm a little bit on the fence with it in a couple of ways, but overall, pretty cool if you like this aesthetic. Just, uh, you know, a little bit more refinement here and there, and I think it could be outstanding. So, uh, thanks very much for watching. Thank you to Kenro for letting me borrow this for a while, and uh, I will see y'all in the next video. Peace out.